Hey guys, happy Saturday. Look, we are, I'm, I know it's been a while. I just haven't been doing anything. Um, I mean, that's not true. I've been doing lots of things, but I haven't been making videos or posting much on Instagram. But uh, so today, you know, I, I just posted something about all the tomatoes in my garden and they have been just going off. I, I, I put them with a drip system this year and right where the beans were last year. So they got all the good fixed nitrogen from the beans from last year. So they've, I did much better this year than usual and I hardly know what to do with them. I've had to throw some away. It's just really sad. So I'm making, um, in fact, I'm, I just threw some away. They were at the bottom of that colander. So I'm making salsa, finally. I usually end up making green tomato salsa and I'll probably end up doing that this year too because they don't show any signs of slowing down and um, you know, I'll end up with lots of green tomatoes. But so this is what I'm doing so far. I have, um, so for the big tomatoes, you want to get their skins off, okay? How do we do that? Um, we're gonna do, a, I have boiling water um, here to my left, you probably can hear it. And then I've already done several, and so I have, this is a six quart pot, so this is probably, you know, already um, about six or eight cups of tomatoes. And then I also have the equivalent of two pints of cherry tomatoes. Um, you know, a lot of recipes will be like, oh, just use Roma tomatoes, just use this, just use that. I, I don't have that. You, if you have a garden, you use what you have. So I'm going to show you what, what I already did. So two of these I'm going to peel and um, cut up with you and put them in with these cherry tomatoes. Um, do you see how, so I put an X at the end and, do you, and then I put them in the boiling water for about a minute. And do you see how it kind of started cracking? So we just peel that all back. And it's good to do it in the four because then you kind of peel it um, like this and it's going to be really, really messy here. So then you got that, right? And I'm going to cut that stem end off and they're very slippery and they'll be very hot when you pull them out. So these have been sitting here cooling for a couple of minutes and just cut off any spots that don't look great. You know, like there's, if there's a crack in the tomato, like sometimes, you know, it'll turn brown right there. So while I'm, I'm well, actually no. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna keep one for myself to eat. And I'm gonna show you on this Roma tomato, we're gonna to cut, you usually use a serrated knife on tomatoes, right? But in this case, you don't really have to because you're just kind of stabbing down into it. Okay, so I made this little X right there. Okay, that's going in the boiling water. And I'm actually gonna do it with this little one too. So that's a Roma tomato, as you might know, or um, it's a San Marzano. They're also known as paste tomatoes, that kind, because they don't have a lot of juice um, and they don't have a lot of seeds. So um, that's the kind that if you can tomatoes, we'll just take the skin off and put them in some lemon juice and salt whole and those are your canned tomatoes. Salad tomato, little guy, right? We've got the dog trying to get something that somebody dropped behind the thing. We've got another X, I'm gonna put this one in here. And then this guy, you know, slicer tomato, right? Okay. Now, while those are doing their thing, I'm gonna chop these guys up um, and put them in the food processor. And I've got this other guy. Um, we've got all kinds of fun colors going this year. I already ate all the black crumbs. They seem to have decided to stop doing anything. This one's a variety called pineapple, which is fun. Oh, hi, Winston. I don't know why he's so interested in tomatoes all of a sudden. So, and these bigger ones, when you cut off the top, you'll see they have the, the spot there where the stem was. Just go, go in a little circle around with your knife and cut those out. And um, I'm gonna get my little strainer and pull these two out. Have they start? No, no, that one hasn't started to crack yet. You'll see it'll start to crack and that's when you know it's, it's, it's gonna be easy to peel. Don't leave them in too long because then they'll cook too much and then more of the tomato than you want um, will come off with the peel, okay? All right, so I'm gonna chop this last guy up. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about or how much you guys are composting, but don't put tomatoes in your compost unless you want volunteer tomatoes all over the place because they um, composting is the exact 
right um, environment for their seeds to start developing. I'm gonna get rid of this and rinse my hands and then, cause it's really wet. <laughs> um, so that we can do our other things. My lab faucet, grab a couple paper towels cause it's really wet over here. Cause if you have a slanty kitchen like I do, sometimes your you know, counters are slanty. Okay, I'm gonna take this guy out and my little, ow, my little paste tomato. That's fine. You see, it kind of is coming up a little bit. Good, we can turn this off and I can stop steaming myself. Um, ugh, I'm actually gonna get it away from my face. There we go. So, do that. I'm gonna let those cool off, I'll do this last. And I'm gonna run the food processor just really quickly to get those little bits in there. And, you know, we can start the, the heat on this because it's going to take a while. So that's, I did three about this size. And I don't know, I don't feel measurements here, but I mean, essentially at this point, I have about half the pot full of tomatoes. So it's about, I mean, it's about three quarts, which is 12 cups. Okay, so I also am going to do three of these. These are poblano peppers, ancho peppers. You know, some people call them, I mean, I don't know what the difference between an ancho poblano and pasilla pepper is. But see, they're pretty hollow inside. They're the stuffing kind. And you don't have to be too terribly diligent about getting out the seeds since this is salsa. Um, I'm actually going to put these in the food processor too to get them a little smaller. It would be nice if I had put them in the, the tomatoes because that the liquid is a good vehicle. But I am going to add some um, some lime juice. Now, I did talk about this too. I am probably not going to can this today because I just don't feel like dealing with it. Um, but cooked salsa, regardless of whether you can it, is going to keep longer than fresh salsa, right? And one of the reasons that we're taking the skins off is that you know whatever um, pathogens or pesticides hopefully not pesticides but whatever you, is on the outside of your tomatoes will will come off I mean you don't you know it's fine if you cook your own if you grow your own tomatoes and they're you know you know what you put on them but anyway okay so I'm just rough chopping these three three of these guys yeah. I also have this little guy, which is as hot as it looks. This is a Hungarian wax pepper. And it doesn't look very waxy, does it? But do you know why? Because all peppers turn red eventually. Um, that's why green peppers upset your tummy, because they're not ripe. We've talked about that before. I have an unreasonable animus toward green peppers. I mean, bell peppers. Um, yeah, in order to, I mean, normally, like, if you really don't want the heat, take out the ribs and the seeds, but as I said, I'm not being terribly diligent about that because this is salsa. Okay, let's get this last one kind of rough chopped and in here, and then we'll deal with this Hungarian wax pepper and ne never touch our faces again. I'm just not going to be able to take out my contact lenses or wear makeup. I'm just kidding. Okay. Eventually it wears off. Okay. Now this guy, and I'm going to show you this peeling process again. So see how nicely it comes off the, these paste tomatoes are really nice with this. Oh, it's still a little hot. Um, it still looks like a tomato. You see that steam? Okay, I'm going to throw that in and this last little guy, and then we'll talk about our aromatics, our onions and our spices. So this little yellow guy is one called Waps Wapsinican Peach, which is also a nice one. Okay, gotta rinse my hands again. And scrape the board. Um, okay. Look at this giant onion. I bought this today at the farmer's market. We're gonna use that guy. I'm gonna use the whole thing. I'm gonna put on my, my uh, water there. Um, 
I'm going to cut these two, you know, and as of, as we've talked about before, in this situation, it doesn't matter if the onion stays together. We don't really want the onion to stay together, right? So it doesn't matter. You can cut it pole to pole. You can cut it side to side, but it's got to be chopped up fine. Um, we, <laughs> um, so what I have done here is I'm just, I cut it in half, right? And then I'm going to slice it across. I am not a good, you know, culinary school onion chopper. Um, I just cut it in slices and go across it. And then I might also get it fine enough. Okay. See, that's just half an onion. That's a lot. I might just leave it like that. Hmm. Hmm. Think about that. We also want to use some garlic. And actually, before I get dirty again, let's put our spices in. We need two tablespoons of salt. Ooh, I hit my little letter sorter. So you guys know you're up on the salt shelf. Okay, we need two tablespoons of salt. It seems like a lot of salt. It's a lot of tomatoes. Um, and if we were going to can it, we'd need that salt as well as the acid to keep things from growing. I am also, I know I just added a bunch of peppers in here. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of um, chipotle um, cause I kind of like a little bit of little smokiness in there. You could also use like chipotle Tabasco. I have some of that too. And I'm gonna do two teaspoons of cumin. Okay. And I'm gonna get a spoon and we're gonna stir it out a little bit. And I'm also gonna add a fair amount of garlic here. Um, I have the rest of this thing. I was cooking, I have eggplants in the oven too that are studded with garlic for the um, baba ganoush. And this is five cloves of garlic. I don't think that's enough. I would probably add like, I, I'd probably do like eight. So I'll do that in a minute after we get off camera. But I wanna run this through and kind of talk to you about the acid and whether we need um, more, whether you wanna use vinegar or um, lime juice. You know, I like lime juice. Vinegar is more safe if you're canning it because it's standardized. If you were going to can it, I think this should make about well, do the math. If it's three, it's gonna be about four quarts by the time we're done. And that is, um, whatever that is, that's eight pints, okay? So, and this is a half pint. So there would be 16 of those. So maybe I should just have a party instead. Give it away quickly. Okay. Um, right, so if you were gonna do a um, can it and get it in that water bath canner, because we're cooking it now, you don't really need to process it for terribly long. Do it for like 15 minutes, okay? Um, shoot, dog, I, hope, I don't even know if the dog would eat that clove of garlic. I just lost one. Okay, let me get these in here, then we'll run the terribly loud food processor, and then I'll let you go about your business for your Saturday. Okay, I have all of this in the food processor and I'm just gonna hold on to it. <laughs> Does it fall off the counter? Um, okay, yeah, see all that, isn't that nice? And I'm gonna take this out and um, dump it in here. Well, how long are we gonna cook this on the stove? Um, cook it for about a half hour. You know, everything should be all cooked down and you know actually cooked. So you want it cooked for about a half hour, okay? And then if you're going to can it, you want to can it immediately when it's hot because you know hot. 
salsa, hot jars, boiling water, then nothing cracks, nothing breaks, then every creates that nice vacuum seal. It's great. Science. But if you're gonna do like me and you just wanna have some around, you know, you might even wanna cook it a little bit longer to cook down some of the liquid on the stove. Um, let me see if I can get some hot pads here. Okay, see that? That's gonna be awesome. Um, Store-bought tomatoes are not gonna be as sweet, so you might need to add some sugar. Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar here, like a couple, like a tablespoon of vinegar. Okay. Um, some kind of light vinegar. Don't add like red wine vinegar to your salsa. Um, and that should be it. But yeah, homemade tomatoes or homegrown or um, farmer's market tomatoes are going to be better. Okay. Um, anyway, that's it. We're a little hectic, but we're at 16 minutes. So I'm going to go. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.